Hey, Fred from the Laptop Barn here. Today we're going to show you how to install memory modules in a Dell Precision 7530 laptop. This particular laptop design has four memory slots. Most laptops only have two. Since this is used in many applications as a high-end workstation, uh, it had, gives you the capability to put four memory modules in it. The purpose of this video is going to be to show you how to install the memory. The particular memory configuration that you want to put into your laptop is going to depend on your own preferences and your uses of the laptop. Okay, as I mentioned, there are two modules that are access from the bottom of the laptop and two from the top that are under the keyboard. So we're going to show you how to get at those two locations in order to install whatever memory you have decided you want to put in. The memory that is used in this design is DDR4. At the end of the video, we're going to say a few words about the particular memory that you use. I will say at this point, though, just to keep in mind, it is best practice to put your memory in in match sets. The best way to do that is get two from the same manufacturer that run the same speed that have the same number of chips on the little circuit board. You'll have a lot less problems if you have a match set both on the bottom and on the top. In this case, we are going to put in a match set of modules made by SK Hynix, 16 gigabyte, 2666 speed. And you'll notice they physically look alike, same amount of chips. Okay. Okay, as I mentioned, <coughs> we're going to show you how to access the four memory modules. This here is, depicts a... Dell Precision 7530. We're going to look at the bottom first, so we've got to take the bottom cover off. Bottom is held on by a series of screws, as you can see in the video. <coughs> We're taking the screws off so that we can get at the back panel. Once the screws have been loosened, you a little pry up tool, you can pry the back cover off. Now, you got to get remove the battery. So there's a couple of screws that hold the battery in, as you'll see us doing there. And then once you've removed the screws for the battery, unplug the battery and lift it out of the way. Under the battery, there are connectors where the um, keyboard is plugged in. You just lift up on those and they will snap out of their placement. <clears throat> now the keyboard's disconnected, we can flip the laptop over and we're going to take the keyboard out. There's a little bezel on top of the keyboard that snap fit in. If you take your pry tool and just pry up on it very carefully, don't break it, but there's no screws, it's just press fit in there. And you see this what it looks like there now. And we pull that off. And now that will give us access to the screws that hold the keyboard on the assembly. So now you can go ahead and take out those assembly screws. Again, these are the screws that are holding the keyboard in. We have to get under this keyboard to get at the two of the four memory modules. So we unscrew the six screws that are holding the assembly. Now we're going to pry up on the keyboard to get it out of there. Just get your tool under it, <coughs> lift up on it. It's held in by some tabs. Just be careful, but they'll pop up one at a time. Okay, now we previously disconnected the connector from the keyboard underneath. If you're tricky, you can get away without doing that and just fold it over, but Okay, there's the door that hides the two mo uh, memory modules. So undo the screws 
or the, it has one screw. Now, there's the two memory modules that are on the top. Now, you could replace these with the larger memory modules. Many times there won't be any there, so you can add modules in there to put, add more memory to your laptop. Once you've done whatever your procedure is to give you what the amount of memory that you want to end up with, then you simply put this back together and reverse this process. Put the door back on. Put the keyboard. You have to fish the connectors through the hole that's under the palm, under the touchpad there. Okay, now the keyboard itself, you want to locate it on the top. Get the top in first. There's some little locating plastic tabs and then push it down. Once it's seated, then you're going to take those six screws that were used to assemble the keyboard and go ahead and screw those six screws in to hold the keyboard assembly. <clears throat> Once you've assembled the keyboard, now we're going to put that plastic retaining ring back on. Just locate it over top of the keyboard and then work your finger around and it'll snap into place. Let's work it carefully all around the perimeter and then down through the center. Again, it's just snapped into place. Okay, once you've done that, now you can flip the laptop over and there are two memory modules exposed on the bottom. Um, you also need to reconnect the keyboard assembly by placing the connectors into the slot on the connector and then the little white plastic handle flips over. No tool required, it's just a zero insertion force connection. Now we put the battery back in. and assemble the screws that hold the battery. Probably best practice not to plug the battery in until you're all done here, but <clears throat> we have it assembled. Now you could put two memory modules in those two slots. If there's nothing in there, add it. If there's something in there and you want to go with more memory, add your new modules in. They just snap into place. Simple as that. Again, put them in and match sets. Now you can plug the battery in and put the back plate back on. Get the back plate snapped into position and then screw down the holding screws that keep it together. Now sometimes before we put the cover on, we'll power the laptop up just to make sure the memory modules are working properly. But just to give you the procedure on how you do the disassembly and reassembly, we're showing you the whole process. That's pretty much it. You've now taken it apart and had access to those panels. Now I've got just a few words to say about memory. Okay, as I mentioned earlier in this film, the one thing you want to be careful of when you check, check your memory is we always say that it is best practice to put them in and match sets. Now by match sets, we mean select two from the same manufacturer at the same speed with the same number of chips on the little circuit board. Again, in our example, we used 16 gigabyte modules from SK Hynix that were 2666 speed and physically when you look at them they look exactly alike. In the old days that was a must, the old days being 10 years ago. Nowadays it's just a good habit. If you get a mismatched set of memory you could get some random things happening that you can't explain. So it's just a really good practice to put them in in matched pairs. If you're in a bind, you can try it without matched. If you don't have a match set, you can try it without, but be aware that if you are having any problems, it could go back to the type of memory that you're using. So there you go. It's Fred from the Laptop Barn. Thanks for listening. If you like this video, hit the like button down there. Or subscribe to our channel. 
we will uh, you will be notified when we post new videos. Uh, typically, ours are tips and tricks for our customers and the general public as well. Thanks for listening.